Now, when the Russian bear celebrates victory over the Nazis at the end of the Second World War, they have an anniversary every year. They, by tradition, right, they parade all their military hardware through Red Square. They give long, tug-thumping speeches that have lasted for hours in the past. It takes it takes just as long to watch all the missiles and the planes and the personnel march past. I remember seeing it on the telly when I was a kid. It took forever. Yesterday... For Victory Day 2023, um, was it a year now, a year and a bit since the uh, invasion in, of Ukraine, there was barely anyone there to take part in the parade. Putin spoke for just 10 minutes, only the heads of a few of his puppet states turned up, and the best bit of kit they had on show, wait for it, was an 80-year-old Soviet-era tank, a T-34. John, is this proof, do you think, that Putin now leads a country that's not so much a bear as barely there? Um, yes. Uh, I mean, you just look at the statistics and the amount of weaponry that Putin has lost. Remember, right at the start, in the lead up to that Ukrainian war, when he was putting all the troops and tanks on the borders, there was a real concern that he would just be able to strike, just go straight in, take over all of Ukraine, storm the capital, Kiev, and just win. And that would be it. And it would be a very quick thing. And obviously, we know that it hasn't quite worked out like that for him. I think the latest statistics show that uh, Russia's lost about 3,700 tanks in Ukraine. And they're having to actually bring out loads of old tanks from storage because they've lost so many. These are tanks from so World War II era tanks in the 1940s, 1950s, that they're suddenly having to dust off and put on the battleground. And that clearly shows desperation. And these tanks are obviously old. They're not like tanks are built yeah. now. And so, you know, I was reading somewhere saying they're basically steel coffins because they're tanks that you put out on the battlefield that modern weapons were able to just pierce straight through them, destroy them. And it just does show complete desperation on the part of Russia. And it does show yet again that this war in Ukraine has not worked worked out at all how Putin hoped it would. No, exactly. there's not enough WD-40 in the world to get those tanks moving again, unfortunately. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but this is one of the good aspects, OK, of the sanctions. Now, when the, the war started and the West sort of announced sanctions against Russia, it's kind of thing that we don't really notice. You just hear it's a word. Right. But the sanctions that they have actually imposed on Russia have stopped them getting the raw materials to build new bits of kit and equipment and munitions and stuff like that. It has stopped them having a flow of money to pay for some of these things to get shipped in. So while they are getting some stuff replaced in Ukraine, generally speaking, once you blow up a tank, that's a tank gone. You can't just roll another one off the production line to replace it. And that's one of the good things that sanctions has managed to do, which is that once Russia has expended itself, it, it can't really stock up again to carry on the war. So perhaps we're now at a stage where Russia and Ukraine, which didn't have much of an armed forces to start with, they're, they're almost now on a parity. And uh, perhaps we're getting to the point where they're just not going to be able to carry on this conflict much longer. And it's going to come to peace talks, which would be, I think, welcome bit of good news all round. And when that happens, it's definitely going to be in this section of the show. But until then, we've had today, we've had uh, the middle-aged misogynist calling a woman a psycho because she found out he was a bad boy. We've had uh, a middle-aged, well, older than middle-aged misogynist um, attacking a woman he's now got to pay £5 million to because he lied about her. Uh, and now we've got a middle-aged misogynist, um, another warmonger as well, who's run out of stuff to make a war with. So generally speaking, it's looking fairly positive. I would say, for anyone who's not a middle-aged misogynist.